According to UN Women, in France, 83.3% of legal frameworks that promote, enforce and monitor gender equality with a focus on violence against women are in place. The adolescent birth rate is 5 per 1,000 population as of 2016, down from 5.6 per 1,000 population in 2015. As of February 2019, 39.7% of parliament seats are held by women. The proportion of women aged 15 to 49 years who have their need for family planning satisfied with modern methods in the year stood at 95.5%. Remarkable, right? However, Work still needs to be done in France to achieve gender equality. And so joining me live from uh, Florida in the United States is Odile Prevot. She is a French corporate liar and an NGO leader. Thank you very much for joining us, Odile. Good evening, Marianne. Thank you for having me. Great. Um, let's go straight to the issues of women in France. There several laws that are supporting women. Uh, there's, it seems like Fre French women seem to be um, better off than more, any other woman on the face of the earth because, I mean, 95.5% of um, family planning needs met. That's a plus for France. That is a plus for France. And I uh, have to say that the government of the President Macron since uh, 2017 um, has been working. It's a political will. It's uh, clear actions from the government. Uh, he wanted to make sure that women will be in the government, and he did it. So that is good. Uh, but before he was on board, already ministers uh, regarding women issue were already in place. So definitely the goal for the French government is to increase women, uh, the number of companies created for women, and also uh, to, to value their contribution to the economic development and to enable them, uh, you know, to uh, gain financial economy. So definitely uh, France is an example in terms, in terms of supporting a woman entrepreneur. And uh, an example also because a lot of networks for women have been uh, put in place uh, from the beginning of the creation of a company on a daily basis. All these networks are working very well and the government has facilitated, facilitated access to a bank credit for women. And um, well, I was surprised to read that uh, the guarantee today covers up to 80% of a bank loan up to a maximum of 50,000 euro. So definitely the French government is uh, doing something right, I have to say. I guess we all have to move to France then. <laughs> but um, France has a lot of laws empowering women beyond this picture projected to the world. What are the underlying realities of women in France? I mean, you've given us all the great statistics, but what are the realities, uh, the underlying realities for women in France? Well, it's true. In the corporate world, uh, you know, the world that I know better, it's true that the right to equal pay exists since 1972. Uh, the law uh, Rudy establishing professional equality between men and women uh, exists since 1983. So we're, uh, what are they doing? Well, the reality in 2021 is not so uh, nice, I have to say. Um, an equivalent working hours, women earn 16.8% uh, less than men in the last report I was reading. Um, the higher the wage uh, scale, of course, the greater the gender gap. So some position for the same position and the same skills, uh, remember, women earn an average of 9% less than men. Um, well, what are the reasons for that? Uh, I have to say that uh, women are in less hierarchically position or senior position than men. We know that at senior position, the Halley rate is higher. Uh, women are also less present in highest paying uh, jobs like finance or uh, engineering. So the wage differences are also clearly visible after the first child is born. So even since the 70s, we have so many laws 
in France uh, for, um, you know, for women. I have to say that five laws have been enacted since 1970s and 60% uh, of the company do not respect these laws. And uh, only 0.2% have been sanctioned in six years. So we do have a lot to do. So, to so you're a lawyer and you practice in France, you've practiced in the UK also. So I'm gonna pose this question to you before. It's gonna be a two-pronged question. You're saying that only 2.5% 2, 2 of these pe people who are not following the laws that have been enacted have been charged. Could it be that women, as empowered as they are, they're not, uh, they've not found their voice to be able to bring these issues to the front burner? Because I'm thinking if there are so many laws that are empowering women, how come women are not taking advantage of them? If the people in their firms, if the, the, the companies that they work for are not allowing for them to um, enjoy these laws and w let it work for them, women should be hitting the streets. And France is known for protesting and getting what they want from their government. So why are the women not in the forefront of this? Well, it's not that they are not in the front face, you know, just like they are there. And uh, But I'm very pleased to see that the government is extremely well represented when we're talking about women. And so we do have minister, French women ministers who are doing that job today. And I'm pretty pleased uh, to see that things are getting there. And uh, But it's coming. It's a cultural thing as well, you know. It's not going to change uh, within one day or even within two years. So since 2017, I have to say that the French government has done a lot for the French women. So I'm pretty pleased to say that I'm French and I'm European. And I have to say that between France and Europe, I mean, France and England, um, it's, uh, it's a different uh, atmosphere. Uh, you do not have the same uh, attitude when you're a woman working in uh, the corporate world, but that is another subject matter. Exactly, and I was just coming to that because you uh, practice in the UK and France. Um, so, the, like you said, the two different environments. How easy was it for you to rise in a male-dominated corporate law environment? Well, because I started my career in uh, Sacramento in California, I was probably used to the Anglo-Saxon attitude. So I definitely prefer to work with Anglo-Saxon. Just that is for sure. It's more straightforward, it's clear. It's, uh, there is no underlying uh, situation. Um, yeah, it's definitely, I have the feeling that it's easier for me. It was easier for me to work in an uh, Anglo-Saxon environment, definitely. But every time you went back to France to do the same thing, you did feel different and you felt some uh, pushbacks, did you? Well, yes, you always do. And, uh, you know, I have the feeling that in every environment you face different issues. It uh, can be as a young lawyer, you realize that the clients may not accept you as a lawyer. And I have examples of situation where it was not easy to be accepted as a young lawyer in front of male, you know, around the table. But that was a situation that I lived through. And then on the partnership track is uh, another issue as well. But um, it's, uh, yeah, it is difficult for women to get to the ladder and uh, to jump to the top. Um, but again, uh, we have to be together, and uh, I will probably say also that rivalry between women is definitely something that we need to take care of. Okay, and five. That, yeah, that Sorry. Finally, um, in your NGO work, because I know that you work with a non-governmental organization in Cameroon, uh, here in Africa, how have you been able to empower and encourage other women, especially those that you work with? Uh, in, in, on the continent? Well, it's true. I uh, run a charity in uh, Mali and Cameroon, and I'm so uh, happy to see all these girls following uh, sometimes my path. I mean, some of the girls want to be lawyers, uh, so that's good. That makes me really proud. And so that, uh, that is positive. And also, I want to make sure that all my girls are going to school. Uh, in Mali, we are opening the center just only with 25 uh, girls. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm going to fight uh, early pregnancy and early marriage. 
Uh, so Mali's situation is different than Cameroon, but uh, my girls and my moms in uh, Bangante in Cameroon are very close to me. So because I go there a lot, I'm very close to them. And uh, there is nothing better than to see a big smile uh, on the face of these kids when uh, they see us, you know, the, the, the entire team when we come around. Well, Adil Pobo is a, a corporate lawyer and she runs a charity in Cameroon. Thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Well, we'll move from France back to the African continent, this time Zimbabwe and Ghana. And we're talking about women in the media. What challenges are they facing and how are they able to pull through? Stay with us. We'll be right back.